Good morning friends, YouTubers, treasure hunters. I'd like to introduce you to my fine liaison officer, Amy. Um, because yesterday I met her at our local museum. I meet Amy every 12 weeks as she goes round the district of Yorkshire to all the museums. And she sits there to help people who take things in to identify them. And she'll take the 10 most interesting bits and pieces away for recording. I went to see her yesterday as I normally do every 12 weeks and um, she looked through my 10 items that I selected for her. She rejected two of them but she found two others in my junk box which she took away. Now the reason for making this video is very simple. I would like everybody in our hobby to do the recording and record their finds. I know lots of people don't do it. Um, it is voluntary but to help the Portable Antiquity Scheme, the PIS, which is a, a branch of the British Museum, build a historical picture of the United Kingdom. It's important that we do submit our finds for recording. You get them back. So my main reason for showing you this video is because I'd like all the people who don't record to see what happens. And the other thing is, of course, there are nations outside the UK who don't have this system to record their history and will be fascinating to know the procedures involved. So let's get straight to it. Here's yesterday's video. So you've done all your good references for me, that's fantastic. I've got a copy. And the bags are all numbered I see. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, so what I've done is I've given Amy 10 objects, which we'll bring back next time after she's recorded them. Each bag has got a number on it, and she's got a card as well, giving her the grid reference of where I found each object. Which is really useful, it saves us having to work it out on the map here and now. It yeah. makes it a lot quicker. So, one third of three. I think that's wrong. Could you agree yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not taking out the bags to have a good look at yeah. that, but it could easily be. Are these all recent finds? Uh, the within the last three or four months. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. That's not 300 years old. I don't know what that is. It's, it's something to do with Knight's Temple, I believe. But I don't well, know that, that style of crosses, but it's used for decorative purposes as well. It's probably a Victorian mirror mount. We, we know they're used on mirrors. We've seen a mirror which has one of those in the corners. Just a decorative So not necessarily mount. a Knight's Temple or anything? No. Just, it's just a cross crosslet. Right, in that case you can find something else in here to make the tenner. <laughs> okay. You don't want to keep that then? No, that's not old enough to record. Nice strap it. Oh, that's a nice swivel. Um, which one's that? Oh yes, horse harness I believe. I did tell you about that. It was um, July or August last year, so that's the oldest piece in that collection. Okay. It is a nice one, isn't it? Mm. I thought it was perhaps a seal matrix with a, a interchangeable piece. No, I don't think so. I think it's probably not that old. Right. I just have a better look at it. I think it might be um, a household fitting. You know, curtains, when you swag them, tie them back, they yeah. have a plait that goes around and you hook it into a oh, thing. Right, yeah. I wonder if it's something along those lines because it's got a screw fitting. Yeah, it's got a screw thread. Yes. And that usually is a sign of a fairly modern object because okay. they're not used generally. Um, so I think is that that's. Interesting? No. It's a flint nodule. A flint nodule? Yes. I thought it was phallical in some way. It's just natural, I'm afraid. Oh, right, okay. That's interesting. That's quite early. Saxon stirrup mount. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So it sits just at the top of the stirrup where the strap joins it. Yeah, I've never door. seen on the PIS even anything that looks remotely similar to that. I think I have um, seen this style, but it's in very nice condition. But it's not the style you normally see. I think it's probably a, win a sash window stay. Yeah, it looks fairly modern, doesn't it? Yeah, I don't think it's 300 years old. Okay. That really bugs me because I can't make out what it is. I've had hundreds of ideas on that one. 
until you cleaned it at all? No, it came out like that. I thought it was a game piece. It's odd, isn't it? It's what it reminds me of are Roman dumbbell toggles. But normally they're symmetrical. I've, I've not seen one with the two halves being different. Well, there's not a single person yet who's had a positive ID on it, and mm. I'm a member of lots of groups. Mm. Right, I'll take your mystery toggle. It might come back as being a bit more modern because although it's got a gorgeous pattern of it, it's quite thin. You can sort of see it's brassy in the curves, can't okay. right, you? Which might mean that it's not been in the ground a huge length of time. But it's lovely. It has a nice feel, doesn't it? I know. Yeah, very nice. You're going to write old time, aren't you? Choosing the tent to take away. <laughs> oh, that's nice. I'll p pass your fragment of pasta. Yes. Yeah. Bronze Age. Same field as the Saxon Mill. Gosh. That would be a good field to cover. Now, this is difficult. It's either a modern draw pull. Furniture piece, yeah. Yeah, or it's just possibly Roman. I don't think it is. Roman? But I'm I don't think it is Roman, right. but I'm wondering if I ought to take it in to double check because they're very difficult to tell apart. Okay. So I'll stick that on the list. That's this last week's find. I originally thought it was a bowl of a fancy spoon, but now not, I don't think it is. No, I think it's a decorative thing again. It doesn't have any fixings, except possibly it was once hinged here. So it yeah. might be the lid off a little pillbox or something like that. Ah, oh, makes sense. But it's yeah. not it's not three hundred years old. Okay. And fittings and such. Now you've actually disregarded the, the piece there, I thought it was interesting. It is more interesting than some of the very modern things, but it's still modern. Modern. Okay. <laughs> it's a learning curve. So we now think that might be a pillbox cover. Well, at least that's one suggestion, and so far that's the only one. So you've got a camel here. <laughs> yes, it's a camel. Said I thought it was a boot when I first found it. Turn it the other yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a camel. <laughs> There's another screw fitting, so that's going to be modern. Right. So anything with a screw or a screw thread in almost internal, always. Almost, almost always, always an internal or external external screw thread means not over three hundred years old. I don't like that as old either. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but we're on mm. the same run as harness fittings. And okay. The hoard I found, 110 denarii. Mm -hmm. There was one object in there that you, you classified as an artifact, not a coin. Whatever happened to that? I think I've still got it. I think it's with all the treasure paperwork. Right. Um, it, just in case they call it in. But I think we decided it was a modern artifact, didn't we? I, I don't know, you just said an artifact. Right, yeah, I, I think it's with all the treasure paperwork ready to be reunited um, once the final deposition of the coins oh, okay. is dealt with. Right. Now, I thought that was a seal matrix. Um, but the letters are in relief rather than sunk in. Yes. So I just... Because that's what I thought when I first saw it as well. Most of these are milled coins, aren't they? Or completely blank. That one's a button. It's got a scar on the back. I must have missed that. It's a very faint scar. Well, now you see it. I can yeah, see it. Yeah. yeah. Oh well. Cops Jump box. And scratched. Of course, I did mention earlier in the video I've given Amy the a piece of card to identify where all my finds were found. I must remind you as well to show you the grid reference finder dot com website and to show you how that works. That one's illegible but probably modernish it's very circular. This you can see it once had some writing on but it's modern from the style of writing. What did you say that was just scrap? It's nothing on it so it's not a bag seal or anything then? No, not, okay. not identifiable. 
I am doing some self-recording on the PIS website. I've got my own account on there, and Amy is very careful and patient with me and helping me to use this technical word and phraseology, which is way beyond me. Um, but I th are you, in imminent future, providing a training day? Yeah, hopefully. I need to um, find a time when I'm not quite so busy. I'll be you that's doing it. Uh, yeah, I do, the, I do the initial training, and then we send you off on other training courses as well. Lovely. That's scary. It's mainly looking at the database though, and going through the fields and showing you how to use it. See, when you said to me that buckle was zoomorphic, I've never heard of zoomorphic before. I now use it all the time. That's why I suggest that people record finds with me the normal way, by me doing it for a bit first, because that gives you all the reports to look at and gets you used to the way we talk about finds and think about So finds. anybody wants to do or get starting doing self-recording because... Ten items every three months is not a great deal to give. No, I know. Um, so which one should we not give you? In other words, which one should we keep back as being the easiest ones to record? I would say when you're starting off that all coins ought to come to me, but buckles and brooches and strap ends, things that are fairly clear and that have good classification schemes, they're probably the easiest ones to do yourself. Right, and to find a parallel. Basically, if you know what it is, <coughs> You, and you can find something similar, then it's easy enough for you to do yourself. Now, when I sent her my um, zoomorphic medieval buckle 1250 to 1400, I had checked for buckles and I went through thousands and thousands of things that came up in the database and found nothing like it. She puts the word zoomorphic in the search and comes up with one straight away. So, again, it's knowing how to search, and that's the thing I'm finding difficult. Yeah. And the first day of Training day with me will help with that a little bit, and one of the other courses that we will send people on is is about using a database, and again, it's about the words to use and the way to search. Yeah. That's got a date on it. 18, Has it? 1868, I think it is. It's a foreign coin. Oh, right. Okay. So, not old. This one, I'm not sure about. I suspect it's modern, but I'd like to double check. So okay, well, I'll give you 10 items there, won't it? Yeah. <coughs> So you can send me the good references for those last two, the toggle and that hook. Find a bag for the toggle. Can I just photograph them? So yeah. I have. And then I'll give you the receipt as well. Okay. Right, so that's the toggle. We believe it's, well, a slim chance it could be Roman. Yeah, I suspect modern, but I want to check that it's not Roman. Yeah. Well, no one else has had any idea, so... It's odd because it doesn't look incomplete. It's not broken anywhere. No, it's not broken at all. I've got every find that are in bags and numbered in a reference book. That's clever. And I've got, yes, I can look at any number and tell you the date I found it, where I found it, and the grid reference. Sorted. That's and excellent. the ones without numbers, I've got photographs on yeah. and grid reference, but no number and no ID. So I'm going to have to go back to the book now and just get these two mm -hmm. to get back to you. Very organised. Lovely. Okay. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little video. And there are several things discussed in there, which I'm going to put links in the description. The, the name of the app and where you can get it from for... Um, I know it's definitely available for iOS. I'm not sure about Android. It may well be. I'll have a look for you and put it on the links in there. Um, the geolocation finder and how you can get the locations of your finds. I'll put that in there. And anything else that's interesting at all, which I think needs to be mentioned or linked or whatever, I'll put all in the description. Now consider, if you don't already, using the recording process to help us to map the historical picture of the United Kingdom. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, please give this one the thumbs up. Please share it with everyone else who you know, especially, who has objects which could well um, change the historical map of the, of the country. And do please subscribe to my video channel as well. So thanks for being with me and I'll catch you on my next outing. Well, here is the website for getting your geolocation, uh, gridreferencefinder.com. And on the left hand side, you'll see that I've got these various boxes here. Now, if you use the app on the phone um, to record every find, then it will give you the longitude and latitude and you just put those in here and it will take you to within 10 meters of where you found it. Um, for the purpose of this demonstration 
I'm just going to show you how to get a reference um, by typing in a location. So I'm just going to type in a local Yorkshire town, Bingley. And we'll grab that now. Just zoom out until we find the field. Uh, oh, that'll do. There we go. So say you found something there um, and you know it is right near that little marker there. Right click. It gives you this pop up window and there is your grid reference. That's really simple and all fine liaison officers will be really pleased that you can give them a reference for every object. In fact, you have to if you're going to be submitting them for recording anyway. So that's the easiest way to do it.